uh, people are great believers in strength and don't want to move out of the weight room. They still feel that, uh, that by increasing strength, you automatically increase speed, and that's just not true. If you have a lot of fast twitch fiber like Carl Lewis and a lot of sprinters, you kind of are more suited for explosive type movements like being a halfback, being a sprinter, being a basketball player. If you're born with a lot of slow twitch fiber, that's fiber that contracts very slowly but fatigues very slowly also, uh, you're going to be a good marathon runner. Alberto Salazar has 93% slow twitch fiber. Uh, on the other hand, some sprinters have as much as 94% fast twitch fiber. So heredity deals the cards, environment plays the hand. So we're saying that the hand can be played uh, rather well, better than we're playing it now, no matter what kind of cards you were dealt with. The speed's been a hang-up of mine since 1958. Uh, my father ran a 9-900 in 1932, so the Dinamans have always been fast, and we've really been interested in speed throughout the years. And my, my uh, drudgery in trying to get people to pay attention to the fact that somebody can get faster has taken about 25 years. Finally, bumping into Bob Ward with the Dallas Cowboys gave me the inroads to get that across the masses of athletes throughout the country. And with that, uh, Bob and I began to think that maybe a national association is the way to go about it. With our own publication, the magazine Sports Speed Evolved, the National Association of Speed and Explosion Evolved, and uh, we're on our way, at least to trying to educate coaches and athletes in all sports across the country. And what you should be doing, and what I call the window of translatability. And the window of translatability says this, it says, to, to be fast, you must practice sports speed. And what can you do better than that? You can train your nervous system over speed, go faster than you're capable neurologically. You see here at the Cowboy facility the best technology available that I know of in the world. We have an incline-decline course that is nowhere to be found on this Earth's surface. We have... Uh, sprint masters that pull us faster. We have diagnostic power trainers that sprint load us. We have not even tapped the surface. This is just the beginning. If it were Orville and Wilbur Wright taking off, we would be shaky taking off. But we're still way ahead of the pack. It's the whole thing. And the rhythm of the sport, you look at the sport and you can write music to it. Uh, and the irony of it is each one, each game is... Uh, a new set of music. And research is telling us today that we are composed not only of one kind of fiber, but we have different kinds of fiber and their categories. I won't go into details on it, but we have what we call those that are more endurance oriented, like the marathon runner on the one side kind of, and on the other side, we have what we call fast twitch fiber. So slow twitch on the long, slow stuff, endurance, fast twitch on the speed. <clears throat> now, we can impact our neuromuscular system because that's where it is. First of all, it's a belief system in our mind. Then we have to turn on the neuromuscular switching, the nervous system, to get it to run faster, to get it to switch faster. We know that we go at um, international sprinting speeds at, say, five plus strides per second, right? So if we go and get that rhythm and ingrain it and train it in our minds and then gradually to be able to tune it up, tune it up, tune it up, tune it up, tune it up. Now we ingrain this rhythm, this pattern into our minds, and it's amazing. Rather than waiting for the ground, we are trying to take more strides per second, and we can run faster. The job description